Is it possible to build a tech startup without knowing how to code? In today's world, there is an app for almost everything we do, and being able to code seems like a must-have if we want to build any startup. But Tope Awatona has proved that you can found a billion-dollar software company without writing a single line of code. He made an app called Calendly, which is a tool that allows users to easily schedule meetings with others. Calendly has been a huge success, growing from a one-person startup to a company with hundreds of employees. The company's revenue has increased by 100% every year, and it is valued at $3 billion in 2021. And by owning a majority stake in the company, Calendly founder Tope Awatona was amassed a fortune of at least $1.4 billion. So how did he do it? In today's video, let's talk about the story of Calendly. If you're thinking of starting your own tech company but don't know how to code, I'm sure you'll take inspiration from Awatona's story. Awatona was born in Nigeria and moved to Atlanta, Georgia, with his family at the age of 15 in 1996. He studied computer science at the University of Georgia before transferring to a business and management major. After graduation, he became a sales rep for IBM. He spent the next seven years working in sales, but deep down, he always wanted to become a successful entrepreneur. During this time, Awatona read an article in the New York Times about the founder of Plenty of Fish making $10 million a year by working just 10 hours a week. So he was inspired to build a dating site as well. But soon, he realized that he didn't have the resources nor the skills to compete against existing products. Then he tried a few more ideas. He created Projector Spot, an e-commerce website for selling projectors, and Yard Steals, a platform for selling gardening tools. Unfortunately, none of these ventures really took off. And the reason is simple. Awatona himself wasn't passionate or knowledgeable about what he was selling. In his words, he didn't know anything about projectors, and honestly, didn't want to know anything about them. And the same goes to selling grills. Tope Awatona lived in an apartment and never even grilled. The only silver lining in these experiences was the fact that Awatona was doing it part-time, which means it didn't really have a huge impact on his life. So reflecting these failed ventures, he realized that if he wanted to create a successful startup, he would have to come up with a unique product. And the best source of inspiration would be an area that he had personal experience with, even better if it was a problem he himself would encounter, and then build a product that can solve the problem. And that's how Awatona got his inspiration for creating Calendly. At the time, he was working in sales and often had to arrange multiple meetings in a day, which required him to send dozens of emails back and forth. It was a very time-consuming process. So he came up with a new business idea. What if you could have a tool that allow users to easily schedule meetings with others? All you have to do is select a time that works for you and send out the invite. The app will then handle the rest, sending reminders and notifications as needed. The idea for Calendly was born out of personal frustration, which is always a great source of inspiration for entrepreneurs. It's much easier to be passionate about solving a problem that you yourself have encountered. So after coming up with the idea, Awatona got to work. But there were one more problem. Even though Awatona had studied computer science in college, but he had been working in sales for several years and had long since stopped coding. So he turned to a Ukrainian tech company to help him develop the app. It's a viable option, but also a costly one, which would probably cost all of his life savings so far to fund the business. But Awatona saw the potential in the app, so he decided to go all in, taking out his 401k, credit card, and small business loans, you name it. In his words, he was going for broke and put every single dollar he had ever made into the startup. And this time, instead of doing it part-time, he quit his sales job and started doing Calendly fully. A year later, while Awatona finished building the prototype version of Calendly, the company also ran out of money. Fortunately, the prototype was good enough to convince some venture capitalists to invest $550,000 to keep the company afloat. And now, Calendly was officially alive. It was completely free to use, partly because Awatona wanted to acquire as many early users as possible through offering a free product, and partly due to the fact that he didn't even have the money to build a payment system into the app. So whether by design or accident, this also made Calendly a freemium model. The basic version of Calendly is free to use, while the premium version costs anywhere from $8 to $16 per month per user. The advantage of the freemium business model is that it doesn't require a lot of marketing to attract new users. The basic version is free to use, but users must share their schedules with Canly logo attached, which means if their friends like the product, they could see the logo and sign up as well. The word-of-mouth approach helped save the company a lot of marketing costs. 
Awatona described these free individual users as Trojan horses that get inside enterprise customers who are more likely to pay for the service. Enterprise customers can set up custom login pages and also connect Calendly to their tools such as Salesforce, Zoom, and HubSpot. Moreover, the product was just so easy to use compared to other alternatives. Calendly would display available time slots to invitees and they could schedule time with just one click. Then the appointment would be synced across all calendar apps such as Google Calendar and Outlook. But by now, you might be wondering, so why hasn't someone else done it before? As it turns out, Awatona wasn't the first person to try and create a scheduling software. There were already a few different options in the market when he started Calendly, like Doodle and Meet Me. And this was one of the reason why investors weren't initially interested in the company. But what sets Calendly apart from the competition, it's its ease of use. The company has focused on making its product as simple and straightforward as possible. And this has paid off. In just a few short years, Canly had become one of the most popular online scheduling tools on the market. In 2019, the company processed over $1 billion in meeting bookings, and the company has also been profitable since 2017, and it's current valued at over $3 billion. Now, no one can predict the future, but that doesn't stop us from wondering what it might hold. This is especially true when it comes to businesses. We've seen countless companies come and go, and even more experience up and downs. So where does that leave Calendly? Only time will tell. It could be overshadowed by larger companies or startups with similar products. It might not be able to keep up with the rapidly changed landscape of the tech industry, or it could continue to thrive and become more successful than it is today. We don't know what will happen, but that doesn't make Calendly any less inspiring. For now, it's a prime example of what's possible for entrepreneurs even if you don't know how to code. So the first takeaway is that you don't have to succeed on the first try. It's often said that successful entrepreneurs are those who have failed the most. While there is no guarantee of success, those who have experienced failure and frustration are often better equipped to handle the challenges of a starting business. They can develop the courage to face setbacks and the resilience to keep going in the face of adversity. Moreover, they can learn from their mistakes and amass a wealth of experience that can prove invaluable in the early stages of a startup. Awatona tried three different ideas before he finally settling down on making Calendly. Of course, starting a business is still a high-risk thing to do, and it may be wise to dip your toes in the water by starting a part-time business before going all-in, which brings to takeaway number two, limit your risk. Working at a startup full-time can be an all-consuming endeavor. It can be difficult to balance the demands of work with the rest of your life. That's why it's important to limit your risk when starting a business. If you're working a full-time job, consider starting your business on the side. This will give you the time to work on your business without having to worry about making ends meet. Of course, there's a number of challenges that come with starting a business part-time. For one, you'll have less time to work on your business. This can make it difficult to get things off the ground. Additionally, you'll need to be extra organized and disciplined to make sure your business doesn't suffer as a result of your divided attention. But if you can manage these challenges, starting a business part-time can be a great way to reduce your risk. And if your business is successful, you can always quit your day job and go full-time. So these are the two main takeaways. Don't be afraid to fall and limit your risk. In conclusion, Calendly is a great example of what's possible for entrepreneurs, even if you don't have an extensive background in coding or tech. When Top Awatona created the first version of Calendly in 2013, he had no idea that it would one day become a $3 billion company. He was simply trying to solve a problem that he had experienced firsthand. Scheduling meetings was needlessly complicated and time-consuming. And today, Calendly has become a popular online scheduling tool because it's so simple and easy to use. It is now used by millions of people around the world and is one of the fastest growing companies in the United States. So whatever your background or experience, don't let it hold you back from chasing your dreams. As Calendly show, anything is possible if you're willing to take the risk. That's it for today. This is Money Therapy, a channel about money. See you next time.